Hello everyone, Mr. Simon is here. Today I just want to speak to you about why women say that men are Weird. trash. Now, how many men in the world know what is it to have a family, to love a wife, and to raise kids? How many? Well, this is what happened. A boy finds a girl. Boy and girl fall in love. Boy and girl grow up, they get married. They have kids. Kid is here. The family is here. What did they know about family? What did they know? What does, what does even the boy know about being a man? He knows nothing. What does he know about his responsibilities towards his wife? He knows nothing. What does he know about raising kids? He knows nothing. But because he has money, he has a house, he has a good career, and somehow he was able to impregnate the woman, then we think that he's a man. But he's not a man. Because nobody has ever taught him how to be a man or nobody shows him how to be a man. I challenge you, there will be very few parents who can tell you that they have actually saw themselves sitting in front of their kids and teaching them about what a man is, what a man does, what a man walks like, what a man talks, how a man treats women, how a man approaches a woman, how a man approaches his wife. I challenge you, there will be very few. But how many men are husbands? Yet they are supposed to be husbands. I mean, if I'm supposed to be a man and nobody has taught me how to be a man, because I'm telling you, my father has never taught me how to be a man. My father has never sat me down and taught me, son, this is how a man speaks to a woman. Before I can even think about going after girls, son, this is how a man approaches a woman. This is how a man handles himself around women. A man, when a woman arrives at the table, a man stands up so that the woman will sit down. Only when the woman has sat down can the man sit down. I was not taught that by my father. A man must love his wife like his own skin. My father didn't teach me that. But my father in heaven taught me that. A man can only truly love his kids if he loves his wife more than his kids. My father did not teach me that. But my father in heaven taught me that. Now what do I mean by that? When you love your wife more than your kids, you're always going to be where your wife is. And where your wife is, is where your kids are. So loving your wife more than you love your, your kids is loving your kids. Because if you love your kids more than you love your wife, you can leave your home still send money to your kids but this home is broken it has no father what am i trying to show you here what i'm trying to show you is that the root of the anger of women against men is the misunderstanding of what is a man what is the role of a man towards women what is the role of a king towards his subjects what is the role of a president towards the people that he's leading. That's where the anger comes. And because for centuries and for millennia, men have always believed that they are the head, they are the leaders. A woman must not say anything. She must just do exactly what the husband is telling her. The man doesn't even have to regard what is lawful. Like a CEO has to regard what is lawful in terms of the way he acts around the people that is leading in the company like the ceo must know the code of conduct even for himself because the ceo can be removed by the board but the man does not consider the code of conduct for himself in accordance with his wife so what does he do because he's filled with the fact that i'm king i'm the man what i say goes so he's gonna tell the wife and say do this and the woman says but why he said because i am the man and i say you must do it so Women, when they look at the Bible, the Bible says that the man is the head. So the head must make decisions like the head makes decisions. But what guides the decision-making process of the head? Is it not the will of God? When Adam saw Eve for the first time, he said, flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. He's literally saying that that is half of me. So when Paul says that a man must love his wife like his own skin, it was not a new teaching. It was not a new revelation. Flesh of my flesh, like your own skin. Flesh of my flesh is in Genesis. Like your own skin is in the New Testament, in the letters that Paul wrote to the church. So do you see that? Do you see the timeline? The timeline has always been that the men must be kind to their wives and protect them. Men must die 
for their wives. Not necessarily die in terms of physical death, but in terms of sacrificing their own needs, their own safety for the sake of their flesh. Like Adam so even say flesh of my flesh, because you have become one with her, now you are one flesh with her. And because you are the one who is the leader, your leadership must be for her provision, must be for her protection. When I go to the gym and I pump muscle, I don't pump muscle so I can give my wife a blue eye. No, I pump muscle so I can pick my wife up. So that I can protect my wife from whatever may come her way. That's what the Bible teaches. So people who do not understand God, have beef with God, have, you know, enmity against God because they don't read what God has said to the man. Now that I've said the background, now why do women say that men are trash? So because women have suffered under men who were religious but did not understand what God teaches or what the word of God teaches, they felt abused. Some women were left with kids. And the man took no responsibility. The man did not look after the, you know, the kids. And then the, the daughters are looking in there. And they grow up under that pressure where the, the woman has to work hard to provide for her kids. She has to be the mother. She has to be the father. While the father is somewhere playing pimp and being the man and getting all the girls that he can get. And he thinks he's, he's the man. But he can't look after his own kids. He can't teach his own kids. He can discipline his own kids. He can love his own wife. He can love the woman that he got, he gave children to. But because he thinks that he's the man, so he got the money, so, you know, he can do whatever he wants. And the children grow up under that kind of situation. And they think, you know, I don't want the man in my life. Why? Because the only man who was supposed to prove to them that men are good was trash. Because he left them. He left the woman to, to fend for herself to defend herself against everything that can go against her. While God gave a command and said that you must love her like your own skin. If you're protecting yourself, you must protect her also. Do you see that? So these young women, if, if these young girls, these, these daughters are looking at this, maybe the woman was not working and she struggled. And if it, sometimes even when the man is, hasn't left the house, but is still in the house, but because the man is abusive, and I'm not even talking about physical abuse. I'm talking about, you know, emotional abuse in which now the woman, because she says she does not work, if the woman has done something wrong, the man doesn't give her the things that she needs, you know, or give her the money that she needs to pay or to buy the, basic, the basics that she needs as a woman. And she suffers under that and she's miserable under that and she's bitter under that. And the daughter is watching. I don't want none of that. I don't want a man. So this independent woman is... It's not because women just woke up and say, I want to be independent. No, it's because women have been mistreated by men who do not understand the command of God in accordance with the way that they're supposed to relate to women, in accordance with the way that they're supposed to treat women. And women felt abused. And because women are not allowed to speak even in the church, women are not even allowed to preach in the church, if if the pastor or the minister in the church also has the same attitude in terms of not understanding what God wants, in terms of the way men must treat women, he doesn't address the fact that God doesn't want you to oppress the woman. In fact, God treats you as equals. God treats the men and women as equal because if the woman was to stop looking after her household, was to stop looking after the kids and disciplining them in accordance with the will of God, the family falls apart. And if the man stop providing, for his household, the family falls apart. These people are equal but different. Their roles are different, but they're equally important. If any of them was to withdraw themselves, the family falls apart. That is in the kingdom of God. Men and women are equal but different because their roles are different. Because even the anatomy of men and women and their very anatomy enables them to do what they're supposed to do. The very make, the very nature of a woman enables her to be able to do what she's supposed to do in her household. The very same way that a man is enabled to do the very things that are required from him, from his own anatomy. You see that? But going back, so when... When the kids see that, they don't want that. So that, that's the mentality that comes. Men are trash, right? Because my father abused my mother. My father neglected my mother. Emotionally, physically, and otherwise. So he's trash. So every time this young woman sees a man, she sees her own father. I'm telling you, there is no woman who came from a family who, which where the man 
loved his wife like his own skin, provided for her, protected her, protected her even from his own kids, protected her even from the woman's father and the woman's mother, protected her even from the man's mother, making her his priority. And in these children, look at that and look at the delight in their mother's heart, the happiness, the joy. And they know that it's because of the acts and the works of their father. These children cannot think that men are trash. They think that men are the most beautiful, the most wonderful creatures in the world. Because the man that they know, their father was good. So what are we saying? What I'm trying to tell you is that when women are saying that men are trash, they are telling us how they were raised. They were raised incorrectly. They were raised by bad men. They had bad brothers. They had bad men. They had, they had bad, they had bad parents. And and and, and I mean bad mother, fathers. And 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 it's funny how a child can somehow in a twisted way because a child can look after her father, a daughter can look up to her father. It can be so twisted that because she thinks that her father is Superman, that her father can do no wrong. But if the father is wrong, because the child does not have the standard of what is wrong, the standard of what a father is supposed to be like, the standard of what a, a husband was supposed to be like, she may even see that evil which was done by her father as good to a point that even when she's going to choose a man, she's going to choose a man who's like, her father, but her father was bad. The, the, the cycle can even continue and become even much worse. But it comes from the man who was supposed to make creation submit to the will of God. And in the kingdom of God, there is joy and delight and serving other people, doing things for happiness and joy of other people, and finding joy in that. That's how the kingdom of God works. This is why Christ died for us. We didn't die for him. So it means that when you love people, you demonstrate by showing sacrifici sacrificial love, showing forgiveness, showing mercy. That is what the husband was supposed to treat his wife like. Merciful and kind and tender towards your wife. Why? Because she's your own skin. You're one with her. I mean, look at how, how God defined marriage in, in Genesis. The minute after, after Adam says that this is flesh of my flesh, God defines marriage. And it, it, it clearly tells us that Eve was Adam's wife before Adam has even slept with her, I mean. Why? Because they were one flesh. So we have to go through procreation and, and marriage so we can become one flesh. And after that, we want. And would I want to take a knife and cut myself? No, of course not. So what happens is that, so for millennia, for centuries, men have been very abusive. And then because women have, have been disgruntled, I'm not saying that all women have always been unhappy for centuries and men have always been unhappy. I'm just saying that that portion which was not happy was ripe for women's liberation and emancipation. So when women's movements and, 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 and women's liberation came, these women were ripe. Even though the movements are not necessarily liberating the women, they're, they're being used to destroy the family. And guess what happens? Instead of men looking at you know, for centuries, we have not been very kind to our women. We've not been very, you know, very tender, very considerate. We've been treating them like our own slaves. Our, they must serve us while it was the other way around when God said that the man must serve the woman and then the woman must see to it that he respects. I mean, she respects her husband in the very same way that Christ served us by saving us and then we submit to that love. Instead of, of looking at that and studying that and saying, let us reform. Let us let us change the you know our ways. Let us love our wives the way that the Lord wants us to. Let us die for our wives the way that the Lord wants us to. Let us delight in doing thing in doing good things to our wives like the Lord wants us to. We form men going their own way because we want to prove that we don't need women. So for years, women have been mistreated, and then when they start challenge that and say we don't instead of us saying that. Let us reform. Let us teach kids about how women should be talked to, how women should be treated. Let us teach kids that being masculine is a good thing. It's, it's, it's God who made you masculine. But your masculinity is supposed to be for the protection and the provision of your wife and for your kids to bring stability in your home. And stability comes from knowing that your father or your husband is loving. 
and is righteous can never wrong you. That's how you become stable. He says, instead of bringing that, we say men go their own way. Let us go our own way to prove to this woman that we don't need it. And of course, men are going to argue and say, but you know, the law is against us. Everything is, well, the law is against us because we let the law become against us. If we understood from the beginning how we were supposed to be women, women were not going to buy into this thing. Whether or not there's bad intentions or even intention in feminism or women's liberation movement, it does not change the fact that men contributed towards that. When you don't raise your kids with love and discipline and they don't feel that they belong to a family, a loving family, a stable family, they become ripe for exploitation by extremist groups outside who are going to act like they're going to bring them love and belonging and purpose because you failed to give your children love and belonging and purpose they're gonna try to find it outside and outside there are only vultures and pimps and they're gonna take advantage of your daughters and there'll be nothing you can do about it why because you failed to do it at the beginning do you see the consequence of that so it's, it's not about children trying to join terrorist groups it is because they did not find purpose in their homes they did not find love in their home tupac in one of his songs he says that he he found love from gangs because his father was not there now look at that so tupac couldn't find love from his own father protection from his own father guidance from his own father discipline from his own father light from his own father and guess where he got it from gangsters i'm talking about a real thing that you can go and find out look at how the misbehavior of men in their homes affects society and can lead to a chaotic self-destructive society so if if as men we don't want to be called trash we have to reform we have to go back and love our wives more than anyone and when we do that the children are going to see that and they're going to want that and we will be the standard of what a man is so now more and more women will be open to marriage because men have become good no more trash no more abusive no more neglectful no more running away from their responsibilities no more boasting about because i'm a rapper i got money and i got so many chains i can sleep with many women no those are just overgrown boys who can't decide which toy they want do they want this one do they want that one and when they have this one because that one someone else have it they want the one that someone has they, they can never delight in what they have that's why these rappers are just overgrown boys it's no matter whether you can you can be an overgrown boy with a very big car like a Rolls Royce or a Maybach but because you're, you're overgrown and you got money you can drive your toy it doesn't make you a man because you can't find delight in one woman so you can't make a decision like a child cannot make a decision based on which toy do they want when you give them this toy and you keep that one they want the one that you have and even if you were to exchange and say okay take this one i'll take this one they always want the one that they don't have so overgrown boys who claim to be man yeah i'm the man they, they can't decide what they want that's why they go from one woman to another they can't decide because they're just overgrown boys but real men they make a decision and say i want this one i love this one and i'm gonna do all in my power to bring delight to this one and i'm gonna be the standard of what a man is or a real man is so the women can see that men are loving and kind and generous and then they can start speaking speaking good about men and my daughters will see what a real man is and my sons will see how a man treats a woman so when they go out into the society i have planted seeds which will change society which will change perceptions about men in society do you get that so we can no longer be trash because now even good men are trash because of bad men in the past who are abused so let us go back and pump muscle and be masculine and be patriarchs but not for control of women no for the upliftment of women to bring joy to women and womanhood protection and provision to women to creating a standard of righteousness and love and self-sacrifice for women so that our daughters can see that and delight in that and want some of that so that when they grow up they can choose the right man because the standard has been given to them of what a real man is who is not trash but self-sacrificial and loving to his wife like his own skin thank you for listening